Marf, and this is Marfugal News. Today, we have a ton to go over in a short amount of time, so stick around. This is a live call-in show at 2244 marf Again, you can call in tonight at 2244-00-6273. That number will be scrolling at the bottom of the screen in just a second. We'll be right back. You want to know what's going on? What's really going on? Nothing in the show should be considered legal, medical, or financial advice. The views of the callers can differ considerably and do not necessarily reflect my opinion, Dex's opinion, or anyone else who works with the show. You should always do your own research and consult with professionals. The internet is full of fake news, so please take everything with a grain of salt. If you have not already, it helps us out if you end up going through any of our affiliates, and it helps you out if you end up protecting yourself against cybercrime. NordVPN is one of the best and one of the easiest to use. If you do not have a virtual private network, it protects your IP address, which is your online identity, which actually connects to your real address and everything else. It also connects to you. If you know anything about how they are data logging and basically getting your profiles down, you can prevent that by having a VPN. Nord is again, one of the easiest. Download it, it's like an on switch and off switch, all you have to do. Go to marfuglenews.com slash VPN. Not only will you get a giant discount on this, but you will also be helping us. I appreciate your support and I appreciate everyone that goes through any of our affiliates. I can't say thank you enough. All right, what is going on, guys? It is Adam, a.k.a. Marf, and this is Marfugal News. Uh, We have a ton to go over today, so just a reminder, if you are new here, you can get notifications over on marfugalnews.com. You can also follow along with our bibliography. In fact, if you go over, you will see that our entire website is organized by thumbnail. Very easy to use. Just look for today's thumbnail, The Depression. The reality is, and then once you click on that, you will see that it brings you right to uh, a full bibliography of all of our sources. That way you know exactly where our information is coming from. Uh, That also means you can go back retrospectively and check my work. You can go back and read the news, or you can actually skip, uh, again, the the show and end up reading the news instead. If you don't have time to watch us, uh, we leave that there for you. That's a service that we provide for absolutely free, so take advantage of it. On top of that, on the web-only content, That is a yellow bar. That is a warning, essentially telling you that that is where the too hot for TV uh, stuff will be. That is the stuff that is too far to one direction for us to cover and stay neutral or try to be as neutral as possible. And the stuff that essentially people argue about in circles and circles and circles. Uh, and purple and purple and purple. All right, and then uh, today is a call-in show, so you will want to call in to this number down below, 224400-MARF or 224400-06273. Thank you, everybody that has joined already. It looks like we have a bunch of uh, folks that already came in. Carol McLean, thank you for your early support of the show 21 minutes ago. I appreciate that. Jay Poe, thank you for subscribing. And then uh, uh, BTS, thank you for subscribing as well. Be Real Beast, uh, Bible Talk 777, and Red Pill, thank you for being the last ones out uh, last show. So thank you. Um, all right, so uh, let's bring in my co slash internet brother, Dex James, who will also be on the phones tonight at, uh, again, option four on 224400-MARF. Uh, Dex, how are you doing and what's going on today? Hello, Adam, and hello, Fugle fam. I am doing just fine. So, again, once you call this number, you will want to press option four. That will get you right through to Dex. If you are a first-time caller, if you've never called or you're nervous to call, call today. This is a great day to call because, again, it is Friday. It's fun day. All right. So call, uh, SoCal Water District installing flow restrictors in homes of customers who use too much water. Now, I actually asked questions last night to the audience, and, and I basically asked the Fugle fam, like, what what do they do? How do they monitor this? Like, how do they know that you're going to water your lawn once a week? Uh, how do they know that you're not just taking an extra shower or you have guests over? Well, apparently, uh, it, they are just looking at your usage. And if you go over what they think you should be using, uh, they will put a flow restrictor on your pipes, <laughs> which is absolutely crazy. And uh, I, the, the reason why this gets like really scary is 
where is the line that is drawn where they can stop dealing with essentials and and necessities like electricity and water? Uh, In California, obviously the same state that uh, some people went without power for eight to nine days during rolling blackouts. So that means they, uh, the, the local government literally told people like, hey, we have to turn your power off because of this emergency. You are going to be without power and we'll basically let you know uh, when, you know, we'll, we'll turn it off and we'll let you know eventually when it will go back on. Now, some people only had one or two days that their power was off. Some people, again, had upwards of eight to nine days. The longest I heard was nine days, which is absolutely insane. Uh, We are all dependent on electricity and how they are able to just turn it off. Again, people say, well, it was because of the fires and it was because of this. Still, it's where does the where is the line drawn as far as being able to restrict water if, if you can't see why that would be something that would be kind of dystopian and draconian, then I, I don't know uh, if you're in the right place. Uh, this is like, this is freaky. As California's water crisis continues, one Southern California water district has a new tool to crack down on customers using too much water, and they believe it's already working. So that means it's already in place. It says the Las Virgins uh, M- Municipal Water District began installing water flow restrictors Wednesday. And so far, four have been installed. Customers who were warned and continued to use more water than what was recommended are getting these installed. The flow restrictor device is about the size of a half dollar with a hole in it. Uh, Without a flow restrictor, water flows normally. Once it has been installed, a considerable amount of water is reduced. They basically put the thumb over your hose and said, ha ha, it's pretty messed up. It says, according to the water district, this tool should send the message to customers that are using too much water in a severe drought will not be tolerated. So what, how do we know what is actually too much? And what if that family, one of those four families, what if they have to have more water? What if they have some sort of special need? I'm assuming that they'll just restrict it first and ask questions later. But again, this is only four uh, so far. How many are they going to be putting on? And how much water do they have to use to actually get this thing put on? Do they tell people beforehand? Or, uh, again, it says that they warn you, but again, they're warning everybody right now. Everybody that's in California, as far as FugalFam, says that everybody is getting written warnings. Uh, I bet you a lot of people are missing their uh, first notice, second notice, and all of this as far as, like, we're going to restrict your water. And then once it's restricted, how restricted is that? Like, can you shower with it? Can you fill up a pot of water? Or is it going to trickle out of your uh, out of your um, faucet? So what do you guys think? Is this affecting you? Are you in SoCal? And has this been placed on? Now, again, right now, it doesn't sound like there's that many. But I bet you in the coming weeks of this hot weather and everything else that's coming... I bet there's going to be more. So if you personally experience this, let us know. Take a video of it and send it to us at marfuglenews.com slash playmyvideo. Um, Again, thank you, everybody that has popped into chat. Irish Rebel says our government, along with the world, around the world, are sanctioning the Vladian private and confiscating their personal items. To me, that's piracy and theft. If they can do it to them, they can do it to us. Yeah, and one thing is is it's always... um, You know, when they say uh, they're silencing somebody like T-Man, when when people silenced him on all the platforms and kicked him off, it's like people agreed with that. But then I guarantee you, if it was somebody that they listened to or somebody they liked or themselves being silenced, uh, it would be an entire, you know, other thing. It would be like, you know, you can't do this. You can't just silence people. Yes, they can. And they can basically take anything and everything. Uh, If you look at if we ever enacted uh, Marshall, I mean, think about it. Your house, your home, your water, your electricity, everything that you have is now the the states. It's now the the government. So there is nothing that is truly ours. Uh, I mean, people kind of uh, do the contrast of between us and G and his country. But, you know, how you cannot actually truly own anything. You can do like a I think it's like a 70 year lease or something on on land you buy. Um, But. It, you don't truly ever own anything in in uh, Zealand. 
Well, here it's kind of the same thing. You're paying property taxes forever. There is no end point. You have to pay uh, taxes on your land forever uh, to the to the country or to the state, right? So, and then if if anything happens, if an emergency happens, they can take it right back. It doesn't matter if you own it or if you own the deed. They can snatch it right back in, in a moment of need uh, in, in a second. So it's not like I don't think there's a place in the world where you truly do own anything truly 100 uh, percent. The the uh, world governments can just snatch it right back. What do you think of it? Let me know in the comments down below. And thank you again, Irish Rebel, for your early support of the show. U.S. car sales at recessionary levels as inflation, rising interest rate concerns increase. So we talked about this on our uh, on our other channel and uh, briefly went over the super bad feeling. And I think that it's actually a lot worse than people think. And um, Fugle fam, I'm, I'm totally welcome to, to hear everybody else's opinion on this. Most of you guys agree with me. We know something is happening here. And, you know, our friends and family are telling us that, oh, you know, it's nothing or it's this or that or a lot of skeptics. They say, oh, nothing's going to happen. Nothing ever does. It, it's basically they, they cry wolf until it actually happens. Right. Well, seems to me like the economy is falling apart very rapidly and the picture on the thumbnail is actually a, a picture from the depression and they don't want to call this a depression because obviously even if using the word depression is not okay they have said recession they even have a hard time saying recession uh, we have inflation we have food prices we have gas prices logistically everything is up our supply chain is breaking down um, our uh, our computers, our electronics, our even our internet and and our infrastructure is breaking down, and we know this. We've 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 seen the signs of it. So at this point, if people are still denying that we are going downhill and getting faster and faster, and that we are a, a rolling stone, then I don't know what to say. At this point, people need to wake up and realize that it's it's not going to get better, and people shouldn't be sugarcoating it to you and saying it's going to be okay. I also am not saying, you know, sell your house and go live out in the woods, but you may want to have a plan or two just in case you might have to down the road. Uh, and that's something that a lot of us are looking into as far as not just, um, you know, where to where to go if things get bad, but uh, what to do with your family and, and how to actually deal with if it gets really, really bad. Uh, if we have a WW3 that hits our shores, uh, again, that sounds crazy right now, but again, if you've been following everything that's happening and if you see the, the writing on the wall, then it's not as crazy as you think. Uh, we're going to be covering some stuff here in a little bit as far as the new uh, carrier that is popping up and, and the possible carriers that are being built right now by uh, Xi's country. A lot of them, they blend right in. You wouldn't even notice that they're making super carriers. Uh, so we'll talk about that here in a minute. But again, uh, the, the bad feeling basically comes from, and I don't know if, uh, if we put it in here again as well. So I'll just kind of bunk, bunch these together. Elon Musk has a super... It's next. It, so I, I ended up just moving forward to it. Um, as far as Elon Musk has a super bad feeling. That's what he told his employees through a leaked memo. And he was essentially saying that he wants to cut 10% of Tesla jobs, salary jobs. As far as the hourly wages people, he's going to hire more. But uh, again, that's actually very easy to do for a company like that. Uh, as far as salary workers, when they cut those guys, that's where it really does make a huge uh, dent into all, you know, all of their employees. So, but it said that he has a super bad feeling about the economy and wants to cut about 10% of jobs, which for a company that size in multiple countries, that's a huge, huge cut. And as far as cutting the salary employees like this because of a bad feeling, I, I don't think it's really a bad feeling. I think it's more either based on the previous story about uh, cars being at a recessionary rate or uh, he knows something that we don't. And that's something that everybody is now looking at as far as what is he doing, what are his actions, and who is he working with right now? What do you think? I would love to hear your comments in the uh, chat below, and I will pop that open here in just a second. I also want to thank uh, R. Tate. Thank you. I appreciate that. Zippy Moons, thank you for the Ninja Guinea early on in the show. Red Butterfly, Vicky K, Chance Paladin, and Lucky Gypsy. Uh, Karen from Columbus, I appreciate you as well. Thank you. 
Uh, but as far as e- Elon Musk having a bad feeling, this kind of reminds me of, uh, of course, um, another gentleman who he talks to on a regular basis now, uh, which is the ex-CEO of Twitter, uh, uh, Dor- Jack Dorsey. As you you may know that uh, a week before Jack Dorsey stepped down as CEO of Twitter, he actually said or tweeted that hyperinflation was coming soon. Uh, in fact, he said hyperinflation is coming dot 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 soon. Now, hyperinflation is a disaster. It's it's as you know, if you were going to say, hey, there's a storm on its way and that storm was a category five tornado or I'm sorry, a category five hurricane, uh, that would be uh, an emergency. That would be a disaster. Uh, that is what hyperinflation would be. Hyperinflation is not just the normal inflation, the high inflation we have right now. Hyperinflation is really, really bad. Uh, we're talking about Venezuela level uh, inflation, uh, where it doesn't matter how much money you have, you, you can't really spend it because it's worth absolutely nothing. So the bad feeling, um, you know, this seems like a whole uh, whole big nothing burger, but I have a bad feeling about his super bad feeling. Let's just say that. What do you think about it? Let me know in the comments below and tell me in the chat what you think. I'll be uh, pulling that up here in just a second. Uh, Ray Dean says, I work for a bus building company. What did that say? I w- wanted to read that. I would love uh, for I would love for you to repeat that comment. You said you you work for a bus company, and what happened? Ah, uh, let's see here. Elon knows because he's government funded. Deep state of mind. He's not only government funded for Tesla. He's uh, for uh, SpaceX, Tesla, uh, the Boring Company, and uh, Neuralink. Neuralink has government ties, so pretty crazy. And then uh, the meeting. We actually have that later, so we'll be uh, we will be showing you that meeting here uh, later on. We'll be talking about that. So good call on that. Uh, mentioned that in the the show earlier on the on news. Stock running low here. That Gen X dude. So uh, again, also people let us know how 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 do your stores look? How do your big box stores look? As far as I'm sure most of you are gonna have full shelves, uh, but one question is is how are your your ma and pa stores doing? Do they have anything on their shelves? As far as smaller grocery stores and smaller uh, smaller stores that sell retail, uh, if you if you know, there's a huge huge kind of um, uh, I guess a, a teeter totter, and all of the big box stores are getting pretty much anything that a- any of these companies had b- besides uh, clothing, electronics, toys. Doesn't matter what it is, if it's in a, a big box store, all of the big box stores are getting stuff, but the small mom and pop places are not. Uh, let's see here, Rusty's Rambles, what's going on? Paul Stone, Jen Boyles, we've got J Stone seventy eight. Thank you so much, Jay, for being here. Tesla A seven four, Tonalia Sloan. What a time to be alive. I know, as bad as it is, I wouldn't want to miss it. Kim O'Donnell, what's going on? Debbie and losing my job in six months or so. I'm sorry to hear that. A lot of a lot of folks have been in the same boat recently. Uh, no pasta on the shelves in the Ozarks, says Kevin Shea. Uh, well, that kind of says a lot, you know, being in the Ozarks, right? Isn't that where people go to, to bug out? Uh, Naomi, what's happening? Uh, we've got Charles, Jacqueline Alvarez. For those who haven't, tomorrow is not promised to no one. Get right with Christ. I agree with that. Riff Curl Readiness, Joanna, what is happening? Ryan Alter, and of course, Bible Talk 777. Thank you, everybody that's popping in. Amish people know the score, yes. Well, Amish people are probably going to be better off than absolutely anyone. Uh, it, when we lose power, imagine, you know, that's a that's a joke and a half that's a comic right there the Amish will be just fine and then Sony to build space lasers with new satellite services unit that's right Sony is building space lasers and it said that Sony on Thursday said it formed a new company that will build and supply devices that allow small satellites in orbit to communicate with one another via laser beams dipping into the fast-growing space sector. Sony Space Communications Corps, uh, registered on Wednesday, is meant to take advantage of laser technology to avoid a bottleneck of radio frequencies. The device uh, will work between satellites in space and satellites communicating with ground stations. 
Okay, first of all, when they're doing something like this and when you're starting to hear about it, that means that this is already being uh, done. Uh, when, you know, I guess what is the reason why they need all of these satellites to communicate with each other other than possibly placement and, you know, avoiding hitting each other? It does make sense the more satellites that, uh, you know, end up up there. Uh, if they communicate with each other via lasers and other things, then they wouldn't smack into each other. They could possibly uh, turn on a little jet and avoid each other, uh, almost like an AI or like a self-driving feature. But some of us and some of the, the Fuglefam military members think that this is because it, something may happen here on the ground where they will not have communication with the ground and some satellites will be up and ahead on top of uh, areas will they, where they will not be able to communicate with the ground. Now think about this. There is one reason for this as well. So if the ground cannot communicate with the satellite, it's way over here. But this satellite on the other side of the planet can or where, you know, a satellite that can see it, uh, it would communicate with that satellite. That satellite would then relay it through lasers or basically communicate uh, the information needed for placing that satellite um, if it could not communicate through. Now, how would something like that happen? A couple military members think that if there was some sort of disturbance in between the ground and the sky... Now, I don't know if I, that's that's just what I was uh, talking to a few of these members about. So if you're a military member and that sounds silly, then let me know in the comments down below. Uh, but could that even be an issue? Does, you know, what would actually be able to stop satellite, uh, I, I guess, the um, beams? You know, it's not like they're a physical beam. It, it beams through the air, right? And it's a radio frequency. Could something, if uh, some sort of disaster happened, could that block any kind of signals going up and down from satellites. Uh, that is my question. And if you served in the military and you know something as far as that could do that, or would an EMP do that? I, I actually don't know that answer. Uh, but again, what, you know, why are they communicating with each other? Um, I guess a lot of it could be just reasonable uh, avoiding each other. It says there are roughly 12,000 satellites in orbit, a number that is projected to increase rapidly in the coming years as rocket companies slash the cost of launching things to space. And firms like Amazon and SpaceX build vast networks of low Earth satellites to carry uh, internet communications to all the globe. The amount of data used in orbit is also increasing year by year, but the amount of available radio waves is limited. The new company's president, Kiyohoi Awahamoto, said in a statement, SpaceX may makes its own laser communication devices in-house and first launched them on its Starlink satellites late last year. Sony said one of its first successful tests occurred in 2020 when it transmitted high-definition image data by laser from the International Space Station to a ground station in Japan. So they can actually basically do images, uh, and I'm assuming video, as, as soon as they get it down, uh, through lasers, which is pretty cool. And then, uh, by the way, Pam Beth, thank you, Sherry Rot Rot Rottweilers forever. Awesome. Uh, and we've got Jay Stone, Kathy Hilton, Survival Game with Ilea. Ilea, good luck on, I love that new channel there, or that, that uh, new name. Susie Bailey Coopty, thank you for your support. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. You can always write a message there as well. And then... Uh, remember, if you do want to call in, 2244 marf uh, the, the first caller will be up in just a minute, so if you do want to get in on that line, make sure to call right now. First-time callers are encouraged. If you haven't called yet, make sure to do so. That's, again, 2244-006273. For anybody that's complaining that they've tried for months and can't get in, uh, yeah, I don't believe you on days like this. Okay, uh, Dex, um, well, you're going to get that going here in a second. I'm going to talk about is builds a laser weapon to zap threats out of the sky. This is yet another uh, laser, uh, I, I guess, invention and, and slash weapon that we have talked about just in the last two years. Almost all of the different countries are building these laser weapons. 
Um, it's kind of crazy considering lasers have been around for such a long time, but now they are finally weaponizing them. It says, after two decades of research and experimentation, is defense officials now say they have a working prototype of a high-powered laser gun that can intercept rockets, mortar shells, drones, and anti-tank missiles in flight. It says officials said that the system performed successfully in a recent series of live fire tests in the southern Is Desert, destroying a rocket, a mortar shell, and a drone, and prompting a standing ovation from officials watching the action on screen. So, by the way, we saw the tests of this. We saw the, some of the videos of all three, and it was not confirmed. Now it is confirmed that they have this. Uh, before, in fact, a lot of uh, sources actually called it propaganda and th did not think that they actually had this. I, I believe that a lot of these are coming into place now. Uh, is and the other I country in the Middle E, a lot of folks are now talking about that it may be the uh, potential hot point for WW3. So this will fit into later stories. But again, it says the government has allocated hundreds of millions of dollars to develop the weapon, which Prime Minister Naftali Bennett uh, described this week as a strategic game changer. He has pledged to surround Is with a laser wall, kind of like an iron dome, but with lasers, right? Professionals involved in developing the system say it's still several uh, years away from being fully operational in the field. And experts caution that even then, it may initially be of limited use in protecting is from heavy incoming rocket fire. One thing that you might want to think about is if the other country knows that this system may actually be able to protect it from all kinds of rockets, and that's the majority of what they have. If you remember the I country ran to the store, um, they actually have an underground boom city, or they they called it a, a you know a, a underground rocket city or something like that and they showed all of these uh dangerous weapons and they're they're stored underground and they said this is all for is well if they know that this thing's going to block who knows they may just pull the trigger on a ton of them uh before they get this thing up and running so uh, again this is sci-fi stuff that is now uh getting into mainstream i mean this is this is now laser star wars type weapons all right, and then uh, Dex, uh, it looks like we have uh, some callers that are lining up, and it looks like we will be having survival living. Well, you get survival living on the phone. I do want to remind everybody there is a new sale on energy solar generators. Now, if you've never seen a solar generator, never used one, these are silent. Uh, they are so silent, they do not make a noise. Uh, I actually have one running our entire studio, both of my power bars, all of my lights and my music machines are all running off of one Flex 1500 and one battery. Now, I would love uh, to eventually get more, but again, this is uh, more than enough for me for right now. Again, the solar generator uh, does not take gas. It takes sun. Uh, also, this can be charged by a wall or by a car. So again, when you are talking about having a backup to power, most people think of a gas generator. Well, gas is now getting absolutely insane as far as the prices go. But also, it's harder to store, and it's going to be almost impossible to get if SHTF actually happens. Not only that, a gas generator is so loud that people can usually hear it from blocks away. Uh, if everyone is desperate and if, if an SHTF situation really does happen, uh, the last thing you want to do is cause attention to yourself. In fact, most people want to be stealth, and uh, if they are bugging in, they want to bug in quietly. Again, this is a great way to do that, and it's also a great way to power your campsite, to power your cabin. Uh, it doesn't matter what it is. Again, this is a really portable system, but at the same time, you can actually extend it up to 96 batteries. They stack, and they also link side to side. So you can actually make a battery wall uh, you know, to, to power you know, as long as you want, uh, as far as up to 96 batteries. You could uh, literally make a wall in your house of batteries. That's how many can connect. Now, as far as uh, doing that, that is, uh, again, you, you have both ends. You have portable and you also have uh, a, an actual solution for a power backup system. So make sure to go check it out. Up to $170 off on certain packages right now. Uh, they have a sale on a ton of different things, and this is an exclusive sale for the Fugle family. Again, uh, this is also, uh, we were introduced by EMP Shield. You can actually get a unit that has an EMP Shield on it. 
Uh, in fact, EMP Shield makes a custom in and out EMP Shield for the uh, solar energy uh, generator. So make sure to go check it out, marfuglenews.com slash energy. Again, this sale is the f uh, now the second sale to ever happen. The first one was not as good as this. And again, this is something that um, we may not have sales uh, again in the future, judging on how the microchips and the, the different parts that go into this are now heading in the direction of. So again, go to marfuglenews.com slash energy. Use the code marfugal. There is a waiting list. Uh, this is each one of these is manufactured in, in some of the highest standards ever. So if you do want to get one, you want to get your name on it right now. All right. And then let's get our first caller. It looks like we have Survival Living. And uh, we have a, I believe we have a link here. May just be his channel link. Uh, let's get Survival Living. All right. You are. Hey, Adam, you there? Yeah, you're live on Marfugal News. Hey, what's going on? Oh, not much, brother. Good to hear from you. Uh, so, right fast, first I want to say thank you for all the help that you and Dex and the mods have shown me in my channel. Um, it's, it's really taken off. We've been able to use that and actually reach out and help out a lot more people than when we first started out. I mean, we're, we're struggling for a very long time, and uh, working with community and stuff has really helped us out a lot. And one of the things I wanted to talk today about was, you know, prepping and working with community it's, it's so easy to go and start as a prepper, go pack out a lot of stuff, throw things in a rack, hide it in a closet somewhere, and just worry about you and your family. And that should be the very beginning of prepping, absolutely. You know, we try to promote a lot of community on our channel because we see the need of actually having extra bodies, if you know what I'm saying, just especially in security situation or rebuilds. But there's a lot of lone wolves and stuff like that that prefer to be left alone. And there's nothing wrong with that. But like with my channel, we're trying to expand further out. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to call in today about expanding and working with your community. Um, you know, we try to prepare for the end all be all, you know, that's one of the big scenarios, but we also try to cover as many scenarios as possible. Everything from your house, catching a flame, burning down to the ground, to losing your job, to natural disasters. All these things are still an SHTF moment for, for a person. All right. I've lost a job before. I've been injured on the job where I've had to rely on just my preps while I was going through surgeries. So I, I saw that you read a comment. Someone was fixing to lose their job. Yeah, that is, that's horrible. Um, having food stuff put back. I mean, that's, that's a bill that you don't have to worry about. If you got food put back, and you lose your job today, well, that's one bill you're not paying. You know, you don't have to worry about buying groceries. You already got it. But we're working on reaching out. And I, I encourage others to do that as well. First, take care of your family, of course. But if you have the means and availability to actually help out other people, especially during a natural disaster, all right? We're, we're in Hurricane Alley. I mean, we, you know, we have hurricanes all the time down here in Florida. And they're saying it's going to be the one, one of the worst ones is what they're projecting. I know they want to say not so much. Well, as a prepper, we try to prepare for as much as possible. And like I said, our channel has been doing very well with our business and everything else. And we're finally at the point where we can actually start doing more outreach. You know, I mean, we're working with our group right now. In case there is an emergency, we have the availability to supply like water filters, water treatment tablets, food, fuel, stuff like that. And I'm not saying everyone has to go do something like that, but if you ever get to that spot where you know you can actually reach out and help somebody's life, I encourage that. I think we all should be looking out for somebody else in the long run. I mean, if, if everything happens and all society goes collapse, we have to rebuild society. We have to. It doesn't mean we have to be in charge. We still have to be able to reach out and help out our fellow man when the time comes. And I'm not saying put yourself out there. But if you have the means to prepare a little extra, just like people in Tornado Alley, they open up their tornado shelters for their neighbors because they don't have a cellar. And we should be looking at the exact same way. You know, something major happens, power, water, everything shut off, and you have the availability to purify water for your neighborhood, something people really should start thinking about. Somebody said that if you're a lone wolf, uh, that will get you dead or whatever, basically in uh, emojis. But... Uh, I, I agree. And there's no, I mean, it, when things actually hit the fan, there there are a couple strategies that some people think are going to work. 
which is like to, to be stealth and to stay low and to be off by yourself. You always see in these movies that, you know, you, you stay quiet, you stay low um, and you stay safe. Right. Well, I, I think that if it's the it either has to be that way or it has to be the complete opposite and you have to have uh, a system. Here's what nobody ever has worked out and nobody's going to work out. Say if there is no government, say if everything falls apart and all of the contingency plans that the government put together to have a government in place and and uh, the, the you know sole survivor or whatever, whatever it's called, the designated survivor, if none of that works, if we really do end up in a really bad situation, people are going to have to organize a system by itself. And really the, the scariest thing out there is other people. And that's why it's 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 kind of terrifying to even uh, even when we did our, our discord and, and things like that. It's like you are going to get the good and you are going to get the bad. How do you decide? I, I don't think that there's anybody that's truly mastered this. How do you decide who goes in your group? How do you get how do you start a group? How do you divvy out chores? How do you uh, keep something like that? And I almost think that somebody should start thinking about these things and start making brackets and 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 try to figure out, you know, if we have a group of 50, how would we run that group of 50? Uh, what would be the age ranges? You know, how would this work out? I'm sure there's there's uh, some folks that are already doing things like it. But again, if, if we had the Fugle fam, if, if something went to, to crap, would we be able to have some sort of symbol that we could raise up and say, hey, we're also Fugle fam or something, or we're also survival family or, you know, survival living family? It, it's like we... A lot of people do not think about how bad it could truly be. And I think that a lot of us are so, you know, I guess sheltered from what it really can be that we don't realize how bad it could be. I mean, I guess you, CFP, you, you think about all of this stuff and you know, I mean, this could be way worse than anyone ever even imagined. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, to reel back on to where you're talking about the, the lone wolf and someone to, you know, hide in the spot and things like that, it really depends on the scenario and what you're facing at that time. You have to constantly look at your area. You know, I mean, like our group, I don't, I don't go in much detail on our group because that's not my place. Okay. But you want to out, you want to out, you want to reach out into your area so you know that you can see a threat coming. Okay, sir. So, so there might be a time that you can stay in and hide in your house. There, there is. Okay, there could be a time where you can just stay put for a week, to three days, or you know whatever. But when a different scenario is happening, when all of a sudden you've got people going house to house, and I'm talking large numbers, you better have a you better have a way out, and you better be able to see that threat coming to you quick. And as far as building groups down here in Florida, it's so much easier because we always have the threat of hurricanes. So it's easy to talk to people about preparedness because that's that's always been my way in. I've always said, hey, you got stuff ready for this season? Yeah, man, I got a couple gallons of water. And then you start to ask them, have you thought about fuel for your generator? Do you have a generator? Things like that. And we start working that way. We don't we don't drop the whole end of the world on people when we talk to people for our groups. OK, and as far as uh, reaching out, like you said, some type of signal. Yeah, I've been able to use my channel and actually meet people in my local area that we met fishing and stuff like that, done some camping trips, things like that. Same with my survival business. I go out and teach these things. And I get to meet these people and then they slowly become part of our group, but it's a whole process. Like you said, you don't know who you can trust until you actually get to know somebody. And then you, they're pretty much your family. You are always with them. You're always talking to them. They're coming over for barbecues. You're getting to know these people. And well, how do you say no down to, you, trust. You say, yeah, trust say, is the big thing. Well, say you get some a uh, couple guys that come into your class and and you guys hit it off you know, for a little bit, and then you're talking about them actually joining a group that if something really did happen, this is a real group in real life that will meet up when everything hits the fan. It's like, well, then what if they know about that group, and then what if they turn out to be complete psychopaths? Uh, I mean, you know, we've you never what's so crazy is what i've learned over the last few years is like anybody uh there's a lot of people that do not um you know they'll, they'll say they're friends but they're not really friends they just they know you right and they will there's a lot of people that will take advantage of anything and everything out there and it's like 
I just wonder about if we had a group and if we have all of these people, how do you say no? You know, how do you turn away somebody in an SHTF situation when if you do turn away somebody, they may die? You know, it's crazy to even think about. Yeah, that right there is that right there comes to more compass of the person. I can never tell anybody what to do in that situation because that's them, their character and their moral. I, I can say my family comes first. The people right here in my home and my surrounding area that I've worked with, they always come first. But like you said, how do you know that this person is not going to change? You have to keep your guard up. I mean, you do. And the thing is, I, I see it all the time online about situation awareness 24 seven. That's going to burn you out. It will. But you have to do what you can. I mean, you, I wish there was one set rule. Say, okay, this is all perfect. Everything's going to be great because we have power. We have this. Well, just like working with the community in case a hurricane comes down. Yeah, I have solar generators. I have all this stuff I'm going to be bringing to location to help people with. But I'm also going to be having security with me, too, because I've seen the meanness of man. I've seen people in desperation that have raided a help spot to take everything because they didn't get enough what they thought they should be getting for free anyway. So yeah, there are times you have to have, I mean, you have to protect yourself. Absolutely. Somebody, somebody asked survival living. Have you ever been that scared? I don't know what the comment before that was, but I I think all of us have been scared. I I think that all of us will be scared when this happened. And that's another thing when, if, if SHTF happens and it's really bad, um, the the I guess the reason why the you know uh, you do what you do and I do what we do is because when it does happen, most of you have been watching this and been kind of getting acclimated to it this whole time. So when it does happen, you're not going to be sitting there frozen. I think many people are going to be frozen for the first few hours, and I think that that is something that a lot of people like you should be talking about is that first couple hours after an event, because I think that a lot of people will not. Uh, move. I think. I think a lot of people will be frozen. They'll they'll think, oh, the government's going to take care of it. And I think in that first few hours after an event, so say if the the first three hours after an EMP, it's going to be a big deal that you already have your stuff in line and you can get out because a lot of folks are not. They're going to think, oh, the power is going to come back on tonight. This is just regional, or they'll think, oh, it's just my my neighborhood, and they won't realize shortly when when you start when you don't see. Uh, your phone and your phone has no bars and your internet has no bars and, and your internet's not working and your phone's not working and your landline's not working. That's a bad thing. And your car won't start. That That's like, hey, an EMP just happened. 90% of people, I guarantee you, are going to be sitting there and they're not going to realize what to do. They're going to be waiting, trying to wait until phone comes back on. I mean, don't you think that the, the first few hours are going to be oh, key? Yeah. Absolutely. And it's going to be one of the, they're going to be frozen, don't know what to do, or it's going to be complete disbelief that, hey, like you said, the power is going to come back on. What we do as preppers, though, we, we war game it out. We're, we're looking at many, many different angles of many different scenarios. Granted, most of these scenarios will probably never play into place, but we want to make sure we have a plan. And we drill these plans. We are constantly working on it, perfecting it, brown out drills where we actually turn all power off. Um, one of the big things, you know, I see it a lot, you know, we got the EMP shield on our vehicle and our solar and stuff like, well, a lot of good that's going to do you if there's no gas, um, that gives me the availability since I'm a prepper, I have gas on hand to fill up my truck that now runs because I have EMP shield and I can leave my area if I need to. All right. Do I have to go slow and push a lot of stuff out of the road? Probably. Yeah. More than likely. Does that make you a target? Yes. But it's not driving through sunflower fields and rainbows and unicorns either it's going to be bad of course people are going to try to take your stuff well i mean that's just the way it is that's just the rationality of people they see it they want it they're scared you'll have to they that's going to be left to somebody's moral compass on that i can never tell anybody what to do in that i just all i can say is i'm going to protect my family at all costs i i think i think that um i think motorcycles are going to be uh king when everything goes down because there's going to traffic is going to stop and you're not going to be able to go any of the main roads. You're not going to go any of the main freeways. Um, I think that motorcycles are going to be zipping through everybody and anybody that has a motorcycle is, is pretty smart. What, um, 
and not everybody can afford to get one. But again, think about this. If you are trying to save up for a car, maybe possibly think about a motorcycle, especially if you're somebody who's single um, or, you you know, if you can. Uh, what we've done is uh, we've done the scooter route. So gas powered scooters that, you know, essentially go 35, 40 miles per hour and they can fold up and go in a trunk. So two of them fit in a trunk. Have that in your trunk when if you do have uh, a situation where your car can't, even though, it, you know, you've got yourself protected and your car still runs, but then you can't go anywhere. That's where, you know, something like scooters come into into play. Um, as far as survival, man, I would love to have a whole show with you talking about some of this stuff because, man, there's so much that I've thought about lately as far as, um, it, there's no, no matter how prepped you are, you're always going to have holes in your system. In fact, uh, we talked about this the, a couple weeks ago yeah, and I don't I agree. Well, you know how like, um, there, there was a documentary about this gentleman who is a, kind of one of the all time experts just in general of, of SHTF and everything else. And he was called in by five of the richest people in the world and he thought he was going to speak in front of an audience and what ended up happening is he went to a table and he has five guys sitting at the table and, and they're like, no, this is your speech. You're not speaking in front of a big group. You're actually uh, sitting with these five guys and this is your thing. And he's like, really? And he ended up at basically sitting there for two hours with these guys and they shot him all these questions and they said, hey, you know, we've already we already have a silo. We have a whole five billion dollar complex. But how do we pay our soldiers? You know, we we already, we already have a security team. But how do you pay a security team if the money is not worth anything? So those are the kind of questions. Like even the people with the most prep, with the most plans, with everything in place, there's always going to be a hole. All of a sudden, you've got a security team, but your money is worthless. All of a sudden, money is worth zero dollars. And how are you going to keep that guy from not? pop popping you and taking over your place these are questions that you know even the yeah. richest and most prepared are asking right now oh yeah yeah and you know food is king during that time for sure um if you can feed your army and keep them well and keep their family safe give them a place but then you still don't know the person he's a hired hand you don't know because they're not there to actually help you. They're just there for a paycheck. So that's actually a huge danger right there. And I see that a lot of people always ask, well, what about these bodyguards and stuff for these people? Won't they turn? But they're very possible. I, I can't read that person's thought. Um, because these people are just there for a position that's getting paid. So once that paycheck stops and their families, you know, different state over, odds are they're abandoning their post. I mean, if, if my family's two states away and I was getting paid to do security over here, yeah, I'm going to go get my family. So, yeah, there is that threat there for sure. Um, yeah, I, I definitely definitely would like to uh, do a show with you. Or I know my my community over there at Survival Living would love to have you and Dex over there. I mean, I've got a lot of Fugle fam in my community. So, uh, of course, I know you're busy, brother. So, you know, whenever we can set that up, that'd be awesome. All right, dude. Let's do it in, in the next week, man. I'm down. All right. Well, hey, thank you for calling in. And again, uh, lots of great points. Thank you so much for for bringing your expertise onto the show. And uh, if you if you guys haven't checked over at Survival Living, make sure to go do so. He is a great guy on and off camera. He is really, really a genuine guy. He cares about everybody in his audience. Uh, that's another thing that I think that you succeeded where others didn't is that you even when you were tiny, now you're almost to 50,000 uh, in your audience is that you always cared about whether it was 200 people or 500 people or 1,000 people. You didn't look at them as subs. You looked at them as people. Every last one of those numbers, assuming they're not a bot, uh, is another person. And that's yeah. what I've always told people. <laughs> you know, don't don't yeah, look at those, things those like... Those bots will get you every single time, brother. <laughs> they definitely will. But when you're talking about survival and preparedness, I mean, you're, you're trying to reach families because... You know, in my opinion, if you can if you can change one life and have somebody prepared, and they're able to take care of their family, that's worth it. You just help. You'd helped in a situation. I've done a lot of bad things in my life, and I probably never can atone for half of it. But if I can help one person today, that's that's worth it to me. Well, yeah, awesome. Thank you so much for calling in, and I appreciate you. And make sure to head over. Uh, your channel, of course, will be on marfuglenews.com under the caller info. Thank you so much. And uh, again, Survival Living, pleasure to have you. All right, brother. You have a good one. All right. Bye-bye.
that was survival living if you guys haven't checked out his channel he has actually done uh he's done classes in different um i guess accredited classes so he is uh more qualified than most as far as to to be able to train and he doesn't stop he he uh, is continuing to better his craft because something like prep is something that you know you could be 7 years old you could know you know two almanacs full of information and you still will not know everything uh the any prepper that says that they know everything is is yeah that that's kind of a, a bs line so again you you're always learning and and things are changing too it's just like if you knew how to build a computer back in 87 look at computers computers evolved and everything everything evolved uh you would have to keep training yourself on the newest stuff so uh MRSA one thank you so much did a huge uh multiple badges i believe at least 10 badges to people over in d live so thank you MRSA one and thank you for sticking around for years now at this point uh thank you thank you and thank you and a few people that owe a thank you to MRSA. uh laura griffith three kid mom wis jen mighty tort bumpity bug nana beer juice and uh lafang man uh they all got just gifted a, a badge so that is really cool uh, end times is in the house hey end times it's nice to see you and uh it's super cool to have like the whole crew there in d live uh neil what about bikes bicycles are great i think um if you can't if you can uh, afford it get yourself those foldable bikes um they're uh, i i want those i you know they're incredibly uh, expensive though I wish that there would be one of these companies that would come up with a foldable bike that was like $300 or something. You know, um, they, they, they've come up with so many other things that are so affordable, uh, but bicycles is not one. If you want a good bike, you have to spend a lot of money. And that's, uh, that's kind of sad. I think foldable bikes, if you had like, if you were able to put four bikes in your trunk and fit them in, that would be an ingenious thing. And I'm sure there's ones out there, but they're expensive. They're incredibly expensive, not what the, the average person can attain, uh, you know, trying to just pay rent. All right. And then uh, we'll, we'll fly through a couple of these. We're going to get into some crazier stuff here in a second. So um, let, we'll, we'll briefly talk about this. I almost should have brought this up with with uh, Joseph there. Uh, the, the Berg. OK, these meetings are a big deal. And just so you know, the head of CIA, the CEO of uh as far as you know that company that was the head lead of um all of the t -t 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 all, all in the same room <laughs> in fact uh nato nato will be there uh the head very top people of nato cia uh the corporations that run all of the health things that have been going on uh they're all in the same room and they're all talking about our future and we are not welcome to go see those talks. Uh, these talks are done in essentially, you know, closed door meetings. And uh, again, I mentioned this earlier on my show. It's like somebody on Twitter. Um, I want to say, no, it wasn't. It wasn't pool. It was somebody else. Somebody basically said, hey, this person, this person and this person are going going to be in this secret meeting. And the the highest retweet the 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 response that of course twitter picks is somebody going well if it's so secret how do you know about it it's not a secret people know about it it's public right here you can see where it is and and everything else uh but unfortunately the meeting there within is is secret and you do not get to find out what is going on inside now they genuine generally talk about kind of the uh different the different uh, topics and when you look at the topics you're like holy crap uh geopolitical uh, realignments by the way i mean just think about that geopolitical realignments so they they basically give you what the slides are going to be right for their talk but we have no idea what they're actually saying uh it says nato challenges g indo-pacific realignment what the hell does indo-pacific realignment mean i know what it means but are we about to have the Indo-Pacific realigned? Uh, think about that. Sino uh, U.S. Tech Competition. Vladia. Con con okay. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Continuity of government and the economy. Elon's not the only one with a bad feeling about this. Disruption of the global financial system. People 
pay attention. Disinformation, energy, security, and sustainability. Post-pan health. Fragmentation of societies. Trade and D-globe. And UKR. Do you notice how UKR is dead last on that list? Pay attention, people, because uh, number seven and number eight, th those are some scary topics to be talking about. Marvin, you got it on the head right there. Lisa R. Hall, by the way, thank you and to, for so something positive right now. Um, Lisa, you are an amazing person. Guys, gotta, you got to go check out Lisa R. Hall's channel. She is just a sweetheart. Soft Kitty 9, Beer Juice, Bug Nana, Stoplight, Smitty Strikes Again, Laura Griffith, Ackright. Uh, act right. Yes, you got to act right. Uh, they have to tell you the truth. You have to listen. Rule number 247. That's right. Um, let's see here. Rachel Lee is here. Thank you so much. Priscilla R., the crypto ginger. What a name. This is already old news now. Well, yes, I know. It's it's a, it's a, about a day old. But we haven't had a show since this happened. So, yes, we do talk about things that are more than an hour old. Uh, pinch runner survival game and by the way if there's something that is say if this was last year uh, I still get to put in my two cents on it by the way um, unless that's not allowed anymore uh, sheepdog 111 can't have orders without chaos yes that's true super cruisers like super soldier uh, let's see here Christina faith az lady 75 what is going on much love fuggles and we've got Frank Servini Richard Haithcox all right, and then uh, Jay Stone, yes, exactly. Thank you. But yeah, so it. I, and by the way, I've seen a lot of people cover this, and they're talking about it, but they're not uh, mentioning even the list of things that they're going over, and which I find surprising. We for the last uh, four years, we have gone over each and every one of them. Uh, Dex, Adam, I just want to make sure everybody knows on that same page you're looking at, you can click on the participant. Uh, at the top and it'll give you a list of everyone that's there and uh, again this is useful information that uh, for anybody that wants to know kind of what uh, who the deciding factors are here who's important who you should probably follow on Twitter <laughs> uh, to be honest yeah that's something I, I did last or the year before that on my uh, um, my first account before Twitter did their cleanse uh, is I followed every person on that list to make sure that I had kind of a whole picture. Because you know if they're there, they're important. So, again, that list is right there. Once you click on it, that will be available on marfuglenews.com. Uh, use responsibly. And then Starving Vladdy and Commander says, Vlad has thrown troops to slaughter in UKR. It, of course, this, I believe, is most likely Ganda like much that's coming out of both sides. It says in a video shared on Telegram, the commander leading uh, the Republic's 113th Regiment fighting for Vlad complains about being sent to UKR without proper boom booms, uh, medicine, or food. So one thing I just do not believe about any of these stories is that Vladian soldiers would be saying things like this, not voluntarily. You were talking about some of the toughest military guys out there. Now, even if th these might be conscripts like pulled from the street, I believe uh, if you know about uh, how people are in that country, they're not exactly, they don't just turn it, it. It hasn't gone through the same kind of softification as the U.S. Um, I, I do know that most of the Russians that I've met in my life, they're very proud uh, to be that. And I, I'm just very surprised and very kind of just blown away that we are seeing all these stories about all these guys. The second they're caught, they just totally turn and they're like, oh, we hate our country. I don't exactly believe that. And that it would be the same if it was reverse, right? I don't know. Maybe would it be if, if a bunch of Americans were caught somewhere? Uh, would they just turn around and say, I hate my country? Maybe at this point, maybe millennials. But again, I, I just don't, I, I don't see a lot of this, you know, and it, it, again, the videos are all available on marfuglenews.com. We are not the owners of the original, so that will be put there. Uh, but it, again, the revelations that were in this paint a grim picture about the state of some of uh, Vlad's troops that are there east of UKR. 
In the video uh, released by a pro Vladian Telegram channel, he stands in front of the battle-weary soldiers who are armed. He reveals how they have been fighting on the front in the Kherson region in hunger and in cold with no medicine or proper bang-bangs. Okay, so, well, you know, what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Give us a call at 224400-MARF. Again, if you would like to call in, the number is 224400-MARF. Uh, I am going to go over real quick and thank everybody. Uh, let's see here. We've got... Yeah, gee, this is crazy. This is craziness. It's Friday, so a lot of stuff is, is coming out as we speak. And by the way, if you do have breaking news of any kind, make sure to put it into the chat. Let one of the mods know of, of what is happening, and we can try to add to the show if something big is happening. Usually on Fridays, it seems like something always happens while we're on the show. All right, and then... Um, by the way, on the last show, uh, Closer Every Day, thank you, Jacob Winter, for the super thanks. Keep up the excellent work, praying for you and your family, and wish you nothing but the best. Jacob Winter, I don't know if you're watching tonight's show, but thank you for doing the super thanks on the replay. And uh, that is much appreciated. Thank you so much. And, uh, of course, Billy Leather, thank you for That Is The Question, uh, did a thanks on that. Bones and Tubbs show, Heather Hatch. Uh, and then Tammy Brown on TakeOver. Thank you so much for the super thanks. Um, a lot of folks have just popped in. It looks like we have over 3,500 uh, watching. So thank you, everybody that has just done so. Uh, Pam Ben, thank you. Bible Talk 777, Red Pill, Vibron. Mystery Mystery School, thank you so much for stopping in last night. And then, of course, we have uh, Peepaw's Dead. Uh, Priscilla R. Maui Racing Realtor. Shirley Millward, thank you for your support for the show. Appreciate it. We are independent, so thank you. Praveen Mohan found a bicycle engraved on an ancient temple. Proves astasis, astas, 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 excessacities. I cannot say that, and I usually can. And proves pre-flood technology. Uh, interesting, Shirley. Uh, I'd love for you to uh, send me stuff on Twitter about it. Uh, if you have any kind of links, I would love to go down that rabbit hole. Uh, Be real beast. I woke up on my tail. I woke up to my tailgate stolen off of my 2021 Tacoma. Two point five thousand dollars to replace it. Had to vent today. Anyway, God bless. Be real beast. What the heck? Don't do a super chat. Put that towards your uh, your trunk. Um, that is insane. So somebody stole your actual tailgate. I have never heard of that. Um, I could see how... That's insane. Like, that takes some balls. Uh, Thomas Leo, thank you so much for your support. Bible Talk 777, this is Pride Month. Many people have been impacted by it. <laughs> I hope that wasn't a... I think that was a joke. <laughs> oh, I can't laugh. It hurts. Oh, man. That's a really bad... That's a... I'm surprised that Leah didn't say that one. <laughs> it actually hurts to laugh. So thank you. Carol McLean. Thank you. Be real beast. <laughs> I can't laugh. U S media outlets warns of stringent measures. A general uh, view on the headquarters uh, that goes over the picture. It says Re foreign ministry said that it was summoning the heads of U.S. media outlets in Moscow to a meeting next Monday to notify them of tough measures in response to U.S. restrictions against the Vladian media. It says if the work of the Vladian media operators and journalists is not normalized in the United States, the most stringent measures will inevitably follow. Uh, to this end, on Monday, June 6th, as uh, the heads of the Moscow offices of all American media will be invited to the press center of the Vladian Foreign Ministry to explain to them the consequences of the government's hostile line in the media sphere. It's, uh, then she added, we look forward to it. Vlad has accused Western countries of imposing unfair restrictions on its media abroad, including bans on some state-backed news outlets. Lawmakers passed a bill last month giving prosecutors power to shut foreign media bureaus in Moscow if a Western country has been unfriendly to Vladian media. Uh, Dex, now I, I know you're going to be on, uh, on the phone getting our, our people on, but 
this is something that you would think of would have happened months ago and is now happening uh, now. I mean, wh- I wonder what they're going to say. What would be the, the consequence? Well, yeah, we did have the, what was it? Um, uh, when this started, I think there were certain laws they put out for uh, putting out news that's incorrect, right? They were going to do certain things and they were going to hold people accountable in their country. Um, I don't know if this is a follow-up to that or if this is something new uh, that they're going after um, and and they've decided there's something you know bigger. I, obviously, there's a huge disconnect when you look at the media coming from both sides of this conflict. Um, and you know, one side says something completely different than the other. Now, mind you, in a conflict, you would expect to hear uh, some differences, but at the same time, you also sort of expect to hear, uh, news reporters, you know, reporting what's being said on both sides, not necessarily just only covering one side and ignoring the other. So usually there's always a subjective, you know, this is the information we got from this side. This is the information we got from that side. Of course, they conflict a little, but you can sort of read between the lines as to who's saying what about what happened where, right? So, um, yeah, I, I, obviously they're, they're not happy with the way things are going and, um, it would won't surprise me if they you know potentially kick out the media uh, from the West inside their country if they don't you know adhere with what they're asking for. Yeah, well, we'll see what happens when uh, when they do this meeting, and uh, so that is in three days from now. We will update you on if we even get to see it. I it, it may be uh, may be blocked. Who knows? I guess we'll have to go around. Uh, around the bout to try to find out what happens there. All right, we're going to get our next caller. Uh, looks like a sighting of a, of, a, of a kind. We'll talk about that here in just a minute. Uh, well, you get, it looks like Lisa on the phone. Um, and it looks like somebody is on deck. Kim O'Donnell is on deck. Uh, Lisa's a first-time caller. Uh, well, you get her on. I do want to remind everybody, if you haven't already, if you do want to get yourself lined up with some MREs and some long-term survival food, we have a solution for you. Again, uh, for about a year, people asked us what, what we would do. Again, I went through many different companies, seeing which ones I liked. I ate a seven-year sample of the My Patriot Supply, and it was absolutely amazing. Uh, again, this is an, an incredible product. It is an, uh, these They have all sorts of different things. They don't just do long-term survival food. They actually do uh, iodine tablets. They do battery banks. They do uh, filtration systems like the Alexa Pure Pro. Uh, But uh, again, you can actually get, uh, I guess, lengths of time. If you want to get a 72-hour kit as far as, you know, three days worth of food or a month worth of food or three months worth of food, there are different discounts based on that. Uh, Now, one of the main discounts that is still there is the three-month supply, uh, $150 off on that. Now, that comes packaged in MREs, then sealed, then double sealed into buckets, uh, which can be stored for long-term use. Now, again, I did say a couple times to put it, you know, you could bury it or put it wherever or put it in your attic. Um, Again, one thing somebody called me out on is you don't want to put it in an attic, uh, in an attic, which is uh, hot and and things like that. You always want to keep supplies in a cool area uh, you know, instead of a hot and humid area. I guess I was thinking in, in here in Seattle, uh, you don't have that. In your attic is just as cool as your basement. But uh, other places, if you were in Texas or something or in Georgia or Florida, then, yeah, not a good place to put your prep food. But again, uh, so if I did, if you do have it in your attic, take it out. <laughs> and then, uh, of course, uh, you go over to marfuglenews.com slash prep. And you can get all sorts of stuff, including the Alexa Pure Pro, which if you don't trust what's in your H2O, that is a gravity-fed filtration system that filters a ton of water at a uh, uh, in a short amount of time. It is really great for filtering any kind of water uh, from any kind of source. If everything hits the fan, the water will stop pumping. Now that food, as far as that goes, that all all the meals are average of 2,000 calories. Uh, uh, per day as far as that's what they base it on it is a really 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 easy system to go by so you don't have to really you don't have to be a chef you just need to have access to water all right and then uh, that's again marfuglenews.com slash prep let's get lisa on the phone thank you lisa for calling in you're live on marfugal news 
Hi. Hi to you and hi to the whole family. Um, amidst all the horror that's been going on, I thought I would tell everybody about something wonderful and glorious that my husband and I witnessed last summer. We're from Pennsylvania and we live up in the mountains and we go camping a lot. And my husband went off to do something and I was sitting there alone and the sky just right around me, right above the treetops turned this cranberry color. And as soon as the cranberry color passed, this, I, I, you know, I don't know if it was an angel. It was some kind of celestial being came right over the treetops. And the other campers saw it and started yelling and screaming, but it was very peaceful and it was very beautiful. And it didn't look like anything that people think an angel looks like or a heavenly creature looks like. Um, it's almost impossible to describe it, but it gave off this vibration of peace. I mean, complete peace and love. And it was the most beautiful thing that you could ever imagine. And my husband comes running up and I said, get the phone out and, and take a picture of this. And he, he took a video of it. And, um, when, I enlarged the video and zoomed in. You could see it was almost like a wheel within a wheel, like the Ezekiel vision. And it's just the most incredible thing. And ever since then, you know, my heart has been more light, more, more happy, just knowing that I know that that whatever it was came to uh, share a feeling of peace with me feeling a peace for my husband and everyone who saw it. And, uh, you know, I don't have a whole lot to say. I just now, wanted to share that. Lisa. Share that I believe there's things looking out for us. Now, you what what colors did you... Now, I put, I put something on screen that just fits the general description of angel above the trees. But, again, this is not Lisa's picture, but... It, it, is it something like this where you saw uh, clouds, or it, it, you said it? What colors oh, was no. it? This was dark. This was this was late, late at night. And it, if you can picture the color of of uh, cherry seven up, <laughs> I know that's strange. Or if you can picture a cranberry color, the most deepest, brilliant cranberry color you can imagine. But it was almost as if these colors that was coming out from it was alive. And uh, it was the most surreal experience that anyone could ever imagine having. I mean, I've seen UFOs before, but it, they were high in the sky. I mean, I've seen things, but nothing. This was real. This was a living creature. It didn't look like a being, it just looked, you could tell it was alive because the in the center part was moving around and, and there was light and kind of like prism light coming out. I don't know. I, I, you know, uh, the longer time goes by, the less, you know, the, the memory of it is still there that, it was wonderful, and the reason I'm calling is because I want to share it. It's because I know, I know, and I've always known there there are things that God has sent to look out for us, and I think that He just let me see that and let us see it, and the other campers see it, just as a confirmation of, hey, I'm here. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I just wanted to share that and encourage everybody. Lisa, and, about, and when, you know, when was this? Was it was it a lot of years ago, or was it this, this was last summer? Do you know, I mean, I don't talk about it a lot. But do you think anybody got pictures me? of it? We got pictures of it, and we have video film of it, which you know I was showing my family and showing everybody. And I 
still have a still picture that mysteriously, I mean, mysteriously, the video is is just gone. It's not on my phone. And there's no reason for it to be gone. It is gone. But I have a still shot of it. Which I can I can send it in to y'all if you'd like. We would love to. A lot of a lot of folks have said if you do have a photo, share it, and we can put it on our website. Even if you didn't have a picture of it or video or anything, I the thing is is uh, everybody always wants you know, you know picture 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 because people want to to be like you know people want proof. Um, what's so crazy to me though is is even if somebody suggests they saw something, well I won't believe. You know, there are, I've seen things that I, I didn't have my phone for. In fact, a lot of the stuff I saw was before we even had cell phones, really. And it's like, even if I don't have a picture, does that mean it didn't happen? I mean, it, I guess no nobody really trusts anybody anymore. Um, I know that that's not what our audience... Our audience is like, if there's a picture, please show. We would love to see it. But I, I, again, it's like, if you don't have it on video now, everybody doesn't believe it. And even if you do, people would be skeptical... And it's like, you can't explain the feeling you get when you see something like that. I believe I've seen an angel, but it wasn't a, in the sky. It was, it was a, you know, it was a, a it was a moving, a moving chair and, and something on video. I actually did show that, but, but yeah, so I, I, yeah. I, I understand what you're talking about. I've, I've, I believe I've been around an angel to the point where it, it gave me that feeling. And I don't even know if I can classify it as an angel. I know it was some type of celestial being, and it was a good one. You know, um, I know that some that there are some creatures that can deceive us. That you know, but this there was there there was too much. It was like pure love emanating from this. So, uh, I uh, but it's human nature to doubt. So I understand that, but, uh, but, you know, I just wanted to share that. And one more quick thing that, that is, is not so nice, but I just wanted to add one thing to what survival living said is there's a lot of people that are going to have to leave on foot and it would be really well. Uh, my whole family knows where to meet. Uh, and 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 we have alternate places to meet, so it's really good to scope out and seek out places and make a weekend of it. Uh, a <laughs> lot of a lot of people, bit, like my sister and I, we we walk the um, the power lines uh, to see where you know the the different trails. One thing to think about though too is like it's like we go through all this to think about where we could go or how we could get out of town. Uh, but I also think about one thing people, we all have to think about is other people are going to be doing the same. So people are going to think, oh, you know, we need to walk along the power lines. If there was some enemy force, they're most likely going to have maps of everywhere and they're going to go around along the po uh, power lines and they're going to set up, you know, uh, gates and checkpoints. So it's it's something to think about when, right. you, when you're thinking about getting out of out of the city. Well, thank you uh, again, Lisa. Yeah. It was a pleasure to have you. And thank you for sharing your experience. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. And you have a good night. All right. God bless you, Lisa. Bye bye. That was Lisa. And uh, if you had an experience just like her, let us know. Send us pictures. At, uh, again, you can go to marfuglenews.com slash play my video. But if you have pictures, that's even easier. You can email them. Or uh, again, if you actually post them onto Twitter and then tag me in them, that, that, is, that works as well. Uh, Peepaw's dead. Thank you so much. And then Tower Bear. Thank you. Says tailgate hack. Put a hose clamp around the cup where it attaches to the truck bed. Put a hose clamp around the cup where it attaches to the truck bed. I'm trying to envision that. Um, hose clamp. So, oh, like the, the round clamp with the screw. And then put that, I guess, is it like a the club for your your tailgate i've never heard of somebody getting their tailgate stolen uh be real beast i'm so sorry that happened that's really crappy and uh, like would insurance is insurance covering that or is that out of pocket did you have insurance i've never heard of somebody taking a tailgate i've heard of somebody taking a hood that's happened uh to one of my friends um and you know it was funny because it's 
His car was bright pink um, and it was spray painted and the person stole his bright pink hood off of his Honda and the whole reason he he uh, painted it pink was so people would stop stealing it. He had his Honda stole four times in one year and he spray painted it pink and the the whole reason he did that is so nobody would steal his car. At one point it, it was just there was no ignition. He would use a screwdriver to start it because that's how they had it. And uh, he painted it, spray painted it pink. It was the ugliest car. Some of you may know the car I'm talking about if you live in Seattle. It, it, it drove around a certain area. Uh, but somebody stole his hood, and it was super easy for him to find it. <laughs> he drove around uh, two neighborhoods. He drove around Beacon Hill, and he was able to find his pink hood. And it was on a car. It's like idiots, idiots. That's all I have to say. All right, and then uh, satellite images suggest new carrier close to launch. We have followed this from, in I guess, inception, uh, from them starting, which what we believe is the third, but it may actually be more. I believe that they're mass producing. Uh, they're mass producing navy ships. They are now the largest navy in the world. G owns the largest navy. The U.S. does not which is kind of crazy to think about. Uh, G's most advanced aircraft carrier to date appears to be nearing completion. Satellite photos analyzed by the Associated Press showed on Friday as experts suggested that the vessel could be launched soon. The newly developed Type 003 carrier has been under construction in the Jingan uh, shipyard northeast of Shanghai since 2018. Satellite images taken by Planet Labs PBC on May 31st suggest work on the vessel is close to done. Now, one thing to think about is it is now 2022. That is about four years time for them to build something like this. I believe they are building more than just one at the same time. And I, I believe this because we knew that they were making massive amounts of Navy ships and we knew that they were making massive amounts of jets and aircraft. Um, and a lot of it was undercover. Now, this is a gigantic project. So to cover this is pretty incredible. Um, and they, they actually did. This one in the very beginning was covered. And from satellite, all you could see were, were these weird uh, blur things that they put these weird, um, almost like a, a see-through kind of bendy prism thing. And once they spotted it from the ground at this yard, I, I believe after that they just stopped trying to hide it because they, you know, knew it was there. Um, but this, if you notice, it's actually, if you flew over this, you may not even notice it. This is the carrier, and that is the gen general shape there. Uh, but as you can see, if you were flying over real quick, you might see some ships, but you might not exactly see that. Now, again... Nobody's flying over this unless they are approved. Um, I guarantee it. Uh, this is one of their shipyards, but I believe that there are more. And the reason why I do think that is because we have found out through the last three years, uh, so many of their projects have been covered from satellite and they're mass producing ships. And we've even had comments from Congress, from senators, uh, from our Pentagon saying that they are in disbelief on how fast uh, Xi is making units. And we're talking about tanks, aircraft, uh, you're, you're talking about all sorts of different uh, uh, Navy vessels. And they have another uh, Navy, which is their fishing military boats, which they call, I think they call it the Shadow Navy or something like that. But these are ships that are actually, they look like fishing boats. Some of them even have the uh, poles that stick out from satellite, look like fishing boats, but they're actually part of militias that are equipped with 50 cals and they are part of their Navy. And that is how they have skirted the laws, the maritime laws, because they can turn off their transponder if they are uh, part of the fishing whole crew thing or something like that. They're, they're able to uh, skirt different laws. Dex, do you remember when we started covering kind of the Shadow Navy and all the, the weird stuff that's been going on? And, and now it seems like they're almost done with this project. Do you think that this is the only one? And it looks like... It, hey, Adam. Sorry. Um, I, I missed what you were saying, so I'm on the other line. But oh, oh. what what was it? That's all right. Uh, you, you know how we started talking about the Shadow Navy that uh, G has and all of the militia fishing boats and and how they're 
mass producing ships at uh can you remember uh what the the quotes were on that as far as we we had pentagon uh, officials basically say that they are making units at breakneck speed and they don't know why do you remember that Yeah, I know that they were they were trying to develop as many ships as possible, and you're talking about the conversion of ships too, right? The the ones that were for commercial purposes, but also making sure that they were military capable. Yes, and yes. It looks like some of that might maybe going on at this site as well. Who knows? But as far as this new carrier, um, we just covered carrier related news as far as they're loading these carriers or at least one of them with. Uh, takeoff and land vertical drones and these drones are actually uh, swarm drones so they could actually swarm together unmanned uh no no you know no pilot so this is getting kind of crazy i wonder what's going to happen when this actually gets released and hey adam yeah the when when this carrier gets released? Yes, and uh, yeah. I apologize, Eric. It got muted there for a second. Either way, um, uh, if any of you guys have knowledge on this or if you are maritime and you have something you can share that's public, let me know. I would love for you to email me at adam at marfuglenews.com. I would appreciate any information that would give us a heads up. Again, we don't want anybody to get in trouble. But at the same time, if we can even get uh, a day's advance notice on some of this, I'd love love to hear it from you guys. Uh, Tower Bear again. Thank you, Nancy B. Wild. Uh, again, these pictures and uh, different videos are available over on marfuglenews.com. You can find all of that there. And then U.S. Bang Bangs Firm Unveils Plan for Taser-Armed Drones. This is insanity. So... Again, this actually kind of makes sense as far as this thing could go in. It's not going to get harmed. Uh, in fact, I'm surprised that this is ha happening now instead of like two, three years ago. Uh, whoever thought of this, it's kind of like stu stu stupid uber genius. This is a taser drone. Now, this thing would be able to go in in front of the police or in front of a, a SWAT team and it would be able to uh, identify, detect, and then tase its suspect. <clears throat> it is, uh, is uh, non-lethal, so therefore it could be used in a wide variety of uses. And it said that the U.S. company behind tasers plans to produce stunt-armed mm, drones. It claims will help stop school blang-blangings. So they're saying instead of an armed uh, gentleman, they would have something like this uh, flying around our schools. And the, the, better, the better the battery uh, technology becomes, the one thing with these drones is that they would always have to have a base or they would have to charge. Uh, they are actually to the point with military drones where these things can last a whole day. Um, that's where at least the military drones, that's not over to the consumer area now. Uh, as far as like the consumer area, I know that like 45 minutes, an hour, or even an hour and a half, you know, that's like the, the big stretch right there is able to fly these things for a long time. But for this to be kind of useful, it would have to jump into action, be able to fly anywhere in the school, deal with closed doors, deal with those kind of things. And I think that that's what they're trying to work out right now as far as using something like this. Let me uh, ask all of you, and I'll turn on uh, a poll right here. What would you rather have? Would you rather have every teacher armed? Or would you rather have a bunch of these drones flying around your kids' schools? Um, in fact, it, it might be an easier question to answer than most think. I mean, or would you rather have both? Uh, I guess num if you choose number one, you would rather have armed, uh, armed teachers. Two, you would rather have uh, taser drones. Or three, both, or four, none of the above. So I'll put that up for a second so people can see uh, what, what the chat of 3600 are going to say here. I'd rather have Terminator 3. 
Arm the teachers to shoot the drones. That's pretty good. <laughs> Man, that is good. Okay, well, so as as you can see, a lot of folks actually would prefer uh, armed teachers. So pretty crazy stuff and uh, obviously very interesting to say the least. And then we have the Queen Elizabeth misses out as royals attend Platinum Jubilee service. Britain celebrates the second day of Queen Elizabeth's Platinum Jubilee on Friday with the highlight of service of Thanksgiving attended by senior royals and politicians that the 96-year-old monarch herself will miss due to ongoing mobility issues. The four days of events kicked off on Thursday when a happy-looking Elizabeth waved to crowds from the balcony of Buckingham Palace after a military parade and royal fly uh, force fly past and later led to the lighting of the principal platinum jubilee beacon at her Windsor Castle home. The celebrations continue with the National Service of Thanksgiving at London St. Paul's uh, Cathedral to pay tribute to the sovereign's 70 years on the throne. Now, on here. Again, um, going to pop over. We're going to get our, our next caller on here in just a second. And um, the main point down here, uh, she will not be the only absentee. Her second son, Prince Andrew, 62, has tested positive for the... <laughs> so, by the way, uh, the, the queen may have the Koof Koof, and apparently the son, Andrew, may have the Koof Koof. Um, we always point out things like this because if any of the, the huge, uh, you know, big names presidents, elites, foreign ministers, if they just start, you know, disappearing or they're out of the public eye, you can always question what the heck is going on. And uh, you always want to keep your head on a swivel at these points because obviously uh, they are not in the public eye. What is about to go down? What could be going down? Or is it nothing? All right, let's, uh, let, let's get our next caller on the phone. It looks like we have... Oh, no... Uh, okay, now I see. Uh, all right, so uh, Dex is screening Kimberly. Looks like we lost Kim O'Donnell. That's very sad. All right, let's get Kimberly on the phone. First time caller. And uh, it looks like we have a link here. Well, you get Kimberly on. I do want to remind folks, if you haven't protected yourself against EMP, you can actually do so at marfuglenews.com slash EMP. Again, this is a device that can actually protect yourself, uh, protect your car, protect your house, your solar generator, your gas generator, your even your ham radio or your motorcycles, your boats, RVs, uh, against an actual EMP. This same company is the same company that was mentioned in the DHS uh, EMP resilience report. Uh, in, in fact, they were called up during T-Man's era when he signed the... the uh, executive order to harden our grid this was one of the first companies that was called this company has done work for dhs dod and of course the demso team helping protect the texas grid so if you want to get the same protection that the uppers are getting on their stuff then i would highly recommend going over and checking it out they make different devices for different things the most popular being the car uh, which means if you put this on your car or motorcycle or rv it's going to run when no one else is will so again that's a really big 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 plus to it now not only does it protect against emp but it also protects against the solar kind cmes we will have another carrington level event it is a matter of when not if so again go over to marfuglenews.com slash emp you have a grandfathered in 50 dollars off per device when you go through our link not only that, you'll be helping our channel out at the same time. They send us a commission every time you go and purchase and give you a big discount. And you get an amazing product that will actually protect you and possibly save lives. All right, let's let's uh, let's bring in Kimberly, first-time caller. You're live on Marfugal News. How are you doing? I am blessed. How are you? Well, it's nice to hear you sound very positive. Hi, uh, Kimberly, how are you doing? So uh, what, what are we talking about today? So I just want to thank you for bringing solutions. Um, I found you through Donut, who was a speaker at my last 
Truth Seekers Water Festival. And I just wanted to take a moment to invite the Marfugal fam to come out to 77 acres in the Appalachian Mountains in North Carolina, where the water's pristine and we have a sacred river running through it. And what we are doing is co-creating a resolution bringing forth solutions for all because water is the solution and the unifier for us all. And so we are sharing ideas and um, information, what that looks like for people. And it's basically just showing them how the tools work and putting them out on the table. Our vendors are phenomenal with these kind of solutions. And one of my dreams is to have you do your show from the festival where your booth would be there and people can come up and order all their goods from you, really creating the community. And what's different and what you've inspired is how do we do this, right? How do we get this to everywhere around the world in a consistent frequency? That is why we share how to do your very own sister satellite water festival. It could be in your backyard, in your neighborhood. And why do we do this? So we have the time to gather and share our gifts and talents with each other, to empower one another, to give each other strength, and to really get to know our neighbor. And also what that looks like in different locations. Imagine being able to travel the country to water festivals knowing the type of water, because true freedom, as you teach, is knowing the source of your water, knowing the source of your food, which is your medicine, knowing the source of your information, which is frequency, sound, and light. And when you know the source, you harmonize with the God matrix. You know what I'm talking about, Marv. <laughs> Well, just in general, any kind of uh, festival and any any kind of thing that that is just positivity and people coming together is usually a good thing. So, yes, and it's something where we're doing three of them, so it's very consistent, and we are building a very powerful foundation with the World Water Community, where our platform allows us for online streaming. So all of our events are in person and online. So you can always be a part of it. And what that allows people to do is now just get a big screen TV, pop it up in their backyard, break bread, come together, cook, and really bring your all your gifts and talents. So at our festival, we have a vendor's village where we highlight our vendors because we call them our solution specialists. And, but the, the key is this, Everybody at the festival gets to vent at their tent. They get to share their gifts and talents. Why? Because gas is expensive and we all have to get gas money. <laughs> right? So we try to really create solutions for everybody to share. And, you know, it's the young people that need this space and the place to gather to share their thoughts and ideas. They're going to really bring forth solutions. And the water is the unifier. It's what is going to bring us all together. And I get to lovingly share with people the language of water and what that is. And we all do it. And when you become conscious of it, all of a sudden you have this inner standing that's very powerful. And you can feel the truth when found. It's the original language. But they've been programming us differently. But now we have the tools. And the opportunity to very quickly share with the whole world, Marsh, we can do this within a year, brother. And I'm doing it. It's time to activate the waters of the light warriors and the kids on the planet so they can have the space to let them come play and fly kites and play with the dancing sticks and learn relaxation techniques and education techniques. Imagine if you knew, if you knew now what you have taken like 20 years to learn and you could give it to a child within a year. That's what I'm talking about. Well, I want to give it to the kids. Well, as far as, um, uh, by the way, I put the uh, link up, and there there are thousands of people watching, and Yay. there's thousands of people that are going to watch the, the replay. Yay. For those that are interested, uh, the link will be available on the website. And again, um, 
as far as uh, events and and officially like sponsoring them, I don't. I have never met you, and I'm I'm happy to meet you today again. Um, and I was really happy to hear that you found Donut Factory. He's a great guy as well. Um, so again, we're, we're yeah. going to make sure that your information is available for who who are out there that are interested in it, and that will be on our website. Um, also, I just want uh, to let you know too. Uh, thank you for calling in tonight, and thank you for for thinking of us when you uh, when you wanted to uh, spread your word. Well, thank you so much, and you guys just are such an inspiration. Keep doing the great job, and you're just love and supported. And come join us. Just come join us, and and bring the family on a beautiful vacation to the to the mountains. And you know that's that's for everybody. And let us spread this and let the waters divide in a very loving way. So thanks for everything. Thank you for this opportunity and keep doing just the wonderful work to Marf and Dex. I love you guys. So many blessings. All right. Well, you have a good day and bless you as well. Thank you so much. Uh, the, the link for this will be on our website. Um, any, anyone is welcome to call in. Uh, again, this may not be everybody's bag as they can see. Uh, but again, we have everybody in our audience and, and, uh, she sounded very positive and, and at, I'm just happy to talk to happy people. So, uh, again, this is going to be on the website for those who are interested. Um, again, make sure to also check out Donut Factory. His website is really good. I have never actually been to his website. Um, th that will also be, can we also link donuts, uh, dough-nut.com? And uh, if you're watching the replay, uh, Donut, or if you're here, uh, appreciate you, man. I, this is a really nice looking site. You did a great job. Um, anyways, this is so cool. All right. Well, anyways, and it's it is harder to find him. So this website is a good um, it is a good place to go, especially when you have people that are getting booted off of different platforms and things. Um, th but yeah, he does a lot of like the predictive programming stuff and all of that. So really cool stuff. And then, uh, Kimberly, thank you for going. I, I wish we, I did, that's too bad. Kim O'Donnell dropped, uh, but we can get you in next show. Uh, Kim, Kim O'Donnell. Um, and then, uh, Dex, we have lots of crazy stuff going on. Do you want to talk about that? Absolutely, Adam. So yeah, head over to marfuglenews.com and click on the thumbnail for the show or on YouTube, open that description and click on show notes. It'll take you to our website. It'll take you right here. Scroll down. Do you see that web only content and you can find the rest of the story? Hey, the big conversation that's going on uh, that one of the, the hot topics is 2A and it's going to be covered here. We covered it here in the beginning of the week. Uh, we're now covering it here again at the end of the week. So there's a lot of updates that are going on there. Um, some, some interesting, uh, performances, if you want to call them that from people in, in, uh, the Senate or in Congress, um, a lot of statements that are coming out, a lot of, you know, uh, things that people like to point out of other folks that didn't necessarily do things the right way, but aren't being called on it. Um, all of that is there, plus a lot of other hot topics that are too hot for TV or too sensitive or too political or too far to one side. We try to cover as much of it as we can here. You can get updates there from uh, a lot of things that have happened in those counting uh, issues, um, even some things being potentially overturned. Uh, not anything big as far as um, what you, some people may be thinking, but certainly big to the persons that are involved. Um, and lots of other updates, especially around uh, health and um, what's happening around the three-letter agencies, uh, whether they're global agencies or even in our own country. So you're missing out if you're not going to the website and you're not looking at the rest of the story. Everything else we put together for you there, it is right there on marfuglenews.com. Just click on the thumbnail for the show. If you miss yesterday's or the day before, click on those as well. Scroll down to that web-only content and get the rest of the story. And by the way, there's a supposed document over there. You got to go check it out. Uh, you know whose son apparently uh, fibbed on a forum to illegally purchase a Bang Bang. So go check that out. Go check out all the other stuff that is down there. Tons of great stuff. It's an, a whole other show. Um, by the way, so many awesome people stopped in tonight. Thank you guys for, for being a part of the polls. And uh, thank you, everybody that participated tonight. Thank your mods, especially. 
your mods have done uh, an amazing job throughout the years of, of really making sure that everybody feels welcome. And that's another thing, too. Um, I just want to point out, obviously, um, Kimberly probably knows that her stuff doesn't rub everybody right as far as um, anything that people immediately hear water, they think new age or whatever. I just want to let people know everybody is welcome here. And we, sh you know, if, if that's uh, her belief or this person's belief, we all need to be able to have our own opinions. We all need to be able to have our, you know, be able to believe what we want to believe. Um, I, d I personally don't think you should force whatever you believe down other people's throats. Um, I think everybody here is an adult. So uh, for those who are interested can do that. For those who are not, um, you know, basically like the kind of thing like, if uh, if you don't have anything positive to say, then don't say anything at all. Uh, Be Real Beast, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, again, like I said, <laughs> that the 15 bucks that you did today, I hope that goes... I, you should have put that back into your tailgate. I I have been there, and uh, I've had my car stolen. I It's just it's such a crappy, crappy, crappy time when that happens. Um, Joseph Newhouse, check out the video I did about Elon Musk. I would love to. I will. I will definitely check it out. Uh, Nosta B looking for new brands, new bands to prep to. Uh, music wise, I, I don't. I don't know. That's kind of a. I've never had that question. Am I reading that right? Thanks, Marfin Dex. New bands. I don't. I don't know. I don't know any like prep central uh, bands. Uh, but now I'm now I'm uh, interested and in going to try to find one. Um, and then, uh, Shirley Millward, Mystery Mystery School, everybody over on DLive, thank you guys so much. I genuinely appreciate everyone that showed up today. Um, I appreciate all of you. Thank you so much. Dex, thank you so much for your service tonight. Much love. Great show, brother. And you guys, it, we will, uh, how, how much time do we have left? I'm, we're probably short on time. Yeah, we're, we got about 10 minutes, so okay. we'll, yeah. All right. So, out. by the way, and after about five minutes, it switches over to Marfugal Jams, our third channel, our sister channel. So make sure to head over there if you want to keep chatting with everybody in the Fugal fam. That chat usually runs longer than the show. Or you can pop over to DLive and hang out with the DLive uh, crew. Uh, Vault 11 is over there and, and a bunch of really great people, including Peepaw's Dead and Tower Bear and End Times and all of them. And of course, our wonderful mods, Chance Baladin, Gem Gem, and every other awesome person over there. Um, as far as Lisa R. Hall, J Stone, uh, West Virginia Prepared Mind, if you're here, Rip Curl, I saw you were here earlier, Bones, and all of my great crew, thank you so much. All right, you guys have a great night. Be safe, be prepared, and Marf out. It's now time for the shout -tro. It's not an outro, it's not a shout out, it's a shout -tro. By the way, somebody said, remembering James Munder. Just want to say, um, again, thank you to the mods that put together uh, photo and video montages. Uh, there was lots of really great people. All, all of my mods did really great things. Make sure to go check out their videos. That's why you need to be following all of the channels. Um, by the way, just... I, I didn't look at it yet, but somebody told me that um, I said that, that uh, James Munder or whatever, that it was some sort of fake story or something. I never said that. Um, I don't know who that was, but again, I personally knew James. Uh, I wasn't close to him before it, before he uh, before he passed, uh, but I was close for him, with him for a while. And again, that hurt me just as much as the next person. So... Um, I know that his best friend, the person that, um, again, is out there, I hope that he is healing from this. I know that a lot of people are questioning on what, what happened. Again, I, I hope people don't stop digging. Um, 
whoever that Tesla driver was or whatever was going on. I hope we find out more information on that. But I will say this. Um, I won't forget him. And I, I hope that if and when I pass that the community will do the same thing for me. As far as people, you know, trying to use James as far as views and all of this, that's just nasty. So if you see that, don't don't uh don't play into the clickbaity stuff and that's coming from me so love you guys rest in peace james
Standing in a dawn feeling clean And everybody in heaven by 